Hi, welcome to Market Minute. We still see a lot of opportunities in individual stocks. Blue chip companies, high quality companies, all the way down to small cap companies. There's still a lot of really attractive stocks. But generally, we've turned negative on the markets, or more cautious on the markets, I should say. So we think that the market still has upside because of these individual stocks, and that the market, by broadening out, Will itself will probably outperform the mega cap growth stocks that have done so well, well over the last couple of years. I want to walk through kind of where we see the market currently. You know, we had 2022, we had two consecutive quarters that were negative on, on the economy. They didn't call it a recession, they, but we had two consecutive quarters, which is the definition of recession, and the market fell by 25.5%. So the market did what it was supposed to do. The, the economy contracted, the market fell. 2023 was just the opposite. The economy grew at a reasonable pace of over 2%, and the stock market came all the way back to being roughly flat from where it started in 2022. The sentiment of the market is now very bullish. There's two and a half times the number of bulls versus bears the mega cap growth stocks have really outperformed in a big way. Um, there's minimal upside in these names. We think those stocks are extended. And then we've had a nice move in the rest of the market in the last two months of the year. So all the charts look very extended. Like, you know, just, everything's just straight up in a straight line because of those last two months. However, 71% of the stocks underperformed last year. So almost two-thirds of the market underperformed the overall market. That statistically really stands out as a major divergence. Therefore, we think that it's a high probability we're going to see a rotation in these quality names. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, but I really like the healthcare sector a lot. I like value over growth, uh, but generally I like the individual stocks itself rather than betting on an index. If you're in the S&P 500, it's probably prudent to use the S&P equal weight, the RSP. I think that has more upside potential and actually probably less downs downside risk if the markets would roll over. If you look at this chart here, so this is the NASDAQ versus the Russell 2000. It's over five years. Look at the outperformance. The, the NASDAQ is up 128% over that five-year period, whereas the Russell 2000, these small cap stocks, are up only 50. So this is kind of our point. If you look at this chart, you can see how the Russell basically didn't do a whole lot last year. It had a nice rally towards the end, but net-net didn't really have much performance. So this is indicative of the entire stock market. You had this massive move in these mega cap tech companies, but the rest of the market didn't perform. It's probably getting well understood in the markets that this has happened, and people are becoming more interested in, in individual stocks rather than just owning the, index, the indexes. So I'll get into this a little bit more, but there's been a major shift which helps the market broaden out. The Federal Reserve gave the wink at their last meeting in December that they're likely going to drop interest rates uh, about three quarters of a percent as we go into 2024. My guess is what they were trying to say is maybe in the latter part of 2024 or when the, when the economy needs it. So the market itself jumped way ahead of that. The market believes that it's 3.75 on the Fed funds rate, that's a drop of a percent and a half from where it is currently. So the Fed fund futures market's already discounting a much bigger move. If the market sees that that expectation is correct, those small cap stocks are going to rip to the upside. The dollar will probably come down quite a bit, and those blue chip companies will perform really well. So you're going to see this broadening now of the overall market, which I would love to see. So. The bond market um, also has had a big rally. So that's, it was like the, the Fed eased about a percent. 
So the bonds on the 10-year Treasury went from 5% to below 4, 3.8%. And we think relative to the fundamentals, the long-term trends of inflation and GDP growth, that the 10-year Treasury below 4 is just not interesting. So we think you know inflation will average 2 to 3% and growth something like 2%. So you get somewhere between 4 and 5% on the 10-year Treasury. Plus, there's a, a, a massive amount of supply still coming into the markets. So maybe it's closer to 5% than 4%. When it's, a, when it's 5 or higher, we're interested in buying those longer bonds. When it's 4 or less, we don't have any interest in it. When we look at the geopolitical risk, I can't remember a time where they've really been any higher than what they are currently. And we are also entering a election year. So in the election year is kind of like Halloween. All sorts of bad things can happen, right? Spooky things. So as we're in this election year, we think it's going to be probably the most bizarre election years in a long time. And it's kind of opened the door for the evildoers around the world to do what they do. So the Biden administration has moved a lot of the ships that we're in the Pacific, South Pacific, over to the Middle East. So that makes us a little bit more vulnerable over there for tai Taiwan, for Taiwan, and that China can come in and push Taiwan around now. So probability of that of happening, who really knows, but it just you know sets the stage for something that could occur. So we don't have any way of really measuring this geopolitical risk but it's out there. Now, I mentioned the Federal Reserve cutting rates. 1.5% in cuts is what the market believes. That's too aggressive. It will only happen if we actually go into recession next year. So if you look at the 10-year dropping from 5 to 3.8, it's stimulated the economy again. So you have this, those cinders that are still hot from inflation. The, the Federal Reserve might be warming those back up again it is an election year, right? So the 30-year mortgages have moved down from a high of 8.5 to now currently 6.5. That's a nice stimulus. So if you're looking at buying a home, you're more apt to do it now in creating more demand for, for housing. And, and housing's been a major issue in terms of the inflation that is added to the overall inflation rate. Earnings for next year, 245 in earnings. That's up 11%. You know, we had good growth last year, but we didn't have any earnings growth. So the economy grew, but the earnings didn't grow. So um, it feels kind of odd to me that we're going to see 11% growth this year. I think that's too high. And so the multiple on earnings are actually higher than what they actually appear to be. But one thing I do like is I do like all that money in the money market funds. Likely that won't fund the wall its way into the stock market over time, but a good part of it could as the Fed brings rates down. That might be when that are back in 2024 as the Fed cuts rates. So if you do the math, right, you got 3.8% on the 10-year Treasury. We'll just call it 4. 4% um, gets you to a multiple of about 20 times earnings for the S&P 500. If the, if the earnings are correct at 245, then you've got a price target for the S&P, say the first half of the year, 4,900 on the S&P, which is up about 3%. Now the bull case is that we see better earnings and the multiple expands a little bit from this level. And so you got 5,400 on the S&P, which is up about 10% versus our expectations of about three. So I think what could happen is that the market broadens out more. As long as we don't go into recession, there should be good performance in stock prices, but it's going to come from different groups. So you can't just own the S&P. You're going to have to own other, other things around with it. So if you look over here, this is really kind of exciting to me because we follow money supply growth pretty closely. And we've seen a nice pickup in M2. So it's been coming down pretty dramatically um, from very high levels, but coming down as we, we've bottomed out here a little bit. The liquidity situation in the economy 
is getting better. So I think that is probably a good part of the reason why the market's up up the last two months of uh, 2023. So we think the overall theme as we enter this year, 2024, is to sell the winners and buy the laggers. So we can see a nice rotation occurring. You see the, the leadership shift generally when the calendar changes for whatever reason it, there, there is, or if there's a recession, the leadership changes. So we think that probably the most compelling stock or sector in the S&P 500 is the healthcare sector. There's, um, there's a catalyst in the, in the markets there. There's new drugs. The drug companies are making acquisitions. It's kind of exciting. So, you know, if you think about that a little bit, that sector has really lagged. Here's, here's an example. So, um, the obesity area for the drug market, it's like AI to the technology sector. So, this is going to be a lot of fun in the drug group. We think there's a hundred billion dollars of new revenues coming from these drugs over time. That's enormous. That's going to fuel all sorts of new research and development and acquisitions. So if you look at Lilly, Lilly, Eli Lilly, good company, really good company. Um, they do a lot of really good work. Um, generally it's traded around 20 times earnings or less over time. And then they come out with the expectations of the obesity drug, it hits the market. The stock over a three year period goes from a 20 multiple up to about 50 times earnings. That's huge. Okay, so there's going to be more competition coming after these obesity drugs, more competition with better drugs actually than what's currently on the market. So if you look at AstraZeneca, we've always liked AstraZeneca. We, we think that's a company that really has their act together. They do great research. They develop great products. It's at 15 and a half times earnings. They have an obesity drug that's going to get approved in the not too distant future. So why can't this you know, company selling at 15 and a half times earnings go to maybe 30 times earnings and then have, have growth with it? They have other things in their pipeline that look interesting as well. Amgen has a really attractive obesity drug. There's lots of these obesity drugs that are going to hit the markets. And, and the market needs them. The market needs different ways of doing it. Less side effects. So our favorite probably is Viking Therapeutics, small cap biotechnology stocks. It focuses on NASH, but they also have an obesity drug that probably works better than anything on the market currently. Oral as well. So looking at 2024, we really like the healthcare sector. Think that there is some momentum occurring there in the fundamentals. It's, it's not really across the board yet in the stock prices. The big drug companies are fixing their pipeline problems by MA. Lots of MA happening. It's probably a good time to be overweight that sector. But there's a lot of other quality companies as well to, to invest in, high quality big cap companies. Um, we also like the small caps. So if the consensus of the market is correct about big rate cuts in 2024, the small cap sector is going to fly. I mean, it's going to be up in a big way. Uh, we don't share that view. We'd rather buy the small cap sectors on a, on a pullback but we think investors probably need some exposure there as well. So some concluding thoughts. You know, the market's had a big run. Big run, back to even. So it's probably prudent to be cautious here. The fundamentals are reasonable, but they're not strong. The valuations are high. There's risk in earnings estimates. The quality companies look the most attractive. It's a gift. So own those quality companies. But be a little bit cautious about the market itself. The drug sector looks compelling. A $100 billion opportunity and expanding. So it's going to really um, expand out the universe of companies as, as they increase their R&D budgets. A soft landing, if it happens, great. Interest rates lower. That will really boost the small cap stocks. But we're not counting on that to, to occur. 
So the risk in the markets are high. You need to be a little bit more defensive currently. Um, the bond market, the bond market is giving you an opportunity here on the short end. So take it. And if you need a longer term, higher stream of dividends with some growth, go to those quality companies that are undervalued. So they should hold up reasonably well in a bear market, but you can also protect yourself if that would occur. So quality stocks to get the same yield or higher as you can in the 10-year treasury. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, come to my website, send me an email, and sign up for Market in a Minute. Get a hard copy of that uh, that we send out weekly. It's free. Take care.